He's the man. He's the man who's known as Dr. Brickley. He's the man who's the man. He's the man who's known as Dr. Brickley. With only six weeks before the election, it was too late to get his name on the ballot. But that didn't seem to discourage Dr. Brinkley. He launched a write-in campaign, the likes of which Kansans had never seen before. He hit the road with a supporting cast of radio entertainers and hospital employees from Milford, as well as the local preacher. His wife, Minnie, and his three-year-old son, Johnny Boy, went along. Campaign ads put forth the image of the family man. Brinkley addressed crowds across the state promising free textbooks for their children, lower taxes, old age pensions, and a lake in every county. KFKB was still on the air, pending a ruling on Brinkley's appeal of the Radio Commission's decision not to renew its license. It was a powerful voice for his campaign. Other voices were crying out against Brinkley, however. The famed Emporia journalist William Allen White noted with dismay the large crowds that were swelling the ranks of the Brinkley camp. An editorial in the Emporia Gazette conveyed his opinion on the situation. In every age and clime, there is a great, seething, moronic underworld. Its denizens are literate. They can read and write, but they can't think. They live on the level of their emotions and vote their prejudices. This enraged the Brinkley supporters. Offended by his reference to a moronic underworld, they deluged White with letters of protest. He responded in print. Dear Brinkley voters, you got me wrong. I didn't mean that you were wicked. I only meant that you were dumb. 